In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about dynamic relaxation. So what's dynamic relaxation and where do we use it? Dynamic relaxation is a phase of solution before time zero. Alas Dana uses the dynamic equation of motion to get a state in which R internal equal to R external, the internal forces equal to the external forces, with no regard to the mass matrix. So we are still using the dynamic equation of motion and we have we need to uh, solve such that the internal force equal to the external force where do we use it dynamic relaxation is used for pre-stressing for example or to apply gravity today in this example i'm going to show you how to apply gravity properly so for example i have this tire sitting on the ground rigid wall so simply sitting there that's a simulation so if i look at the rigid wall reaction i should see the weight of the tire which is constant in the rigid wall force the tire weight is 35 kilogram so here's gravity uh, there is a load curve for gravity load curve 10 as you can see and gravity is applied impulsively so at time zero gravity is acting fully so if now if i run this example And look at the RW force. Then I see that the reaction of the tire, obviously, the reaction of the ground to the tire is not correct. Uh, it's oscillatory plus I don't get um, the weight of the tire properly. The weight of the tire should be 0.35, uh, which is in kilonewtons. Okay, which is 35 kilogram so to apply gravity correctly i need to use or invoke dynamic relaxation the way to invoke dynamic relaxation is after the curve id we put a flag of two two means use this load curve for the dynamic relaxation phase plus the solution phase and gravity must be impulsive in this case for it, for it to be act properly at time zero so now if i run it I see that the window looks different in LS Dyna. It's doing some kind of an iterative solution. So if I scroll up here, I will see statement of dynamic relaxation information. And you see number of cycles. These are the actual time steps that LS Dyna is doing. And the last column is of a concern that I need to look for. So that's a convergence factor. By default, the, conver the convergence factor should be less than one over a thousand for the dynamic relaxation to be valid and convergent. So there it is. You can see it's doing iteration and it, when it reaches less than one over a thousand, which is this value, then the dynamic relaxation phase is convergent and you go into the solution phase, which starts from time zero. So solution phase, time zero up to termination time, which is 100 millisecond in this problem. If I look at the reaction of the ground, then I will see the following. Uh, so you can see the y-axis is not changing much. So if I scale the y-axis from zero, then you can see the reaction of the ground is almost constant, which is indication that the direct relaxation is working in this uh, in this example. Uh, you can see the weight of the tire is about 0.35 kilonewton, which is 35 kilogram. So dynamic relaxation is used, for example, to uh, preload structures. Uh, in general, it works. Uh, well when I have small displacement uh, problem if I have large strain problem I should not invoke dynamic relaxation because in general it will not converge so you'll see LS Dyna spending significant amount of CPU and calculation trying to get R internal to equal R external uh, but with no luck meaning the convergence factor will be never uh, will never be uh, reached this is part of uh, some of the courses that we teach at lsdinaonline.com. Uh,